Uh, today we're going to be answering a viewer's question, and I forgot to write down his name. Uh, but I I'm going to try to answer his question. I don't think I'm doing exactly what he wants. He wants to know how you can uh, save all the text on the screen to a file using a script. Now obviously you can highlight and copy and paste that into a text file. Um, I don't know if there is a way to save the output on the screen after the command has been run, but uh, after he asked me this question, I quickly thought of a way that you could easily record all the output of all your commands you run to a file, um, but you have to do this before you start running the, the uh, commands. So let's have a quick look, and it's actually a pretty simple con concept. I, I, when I first thought of doing it, I didn't think it would actually work. It's one of those things that I tried before I looked anything up, and, and this is what I came up with. So let me move to my temp folder real quick. I'll clear the screen. Okay, now from this point on, we want to record every command we run. Well, at first, this was the first thing I did. I typed bash. If you type bash, it starts a new bash session inside your terminal here. No problem. But if we do bash and we'll go greater than and we'll say record.text, it starts up bash and now the output of every command we run will go into that text file. And it worked, except for one problem. And I'll give you an example. I'll say ls for list. Nothing came up. Date. Nothing came up. Okay, so what's going on? Well, this is the issue. All the outputs going into that text file. So let me open up a new terminal screen here. And line it up here properly. And what we'll do is we'll cat out that record file. And you can see the output, even the little uh, beginning little uh, fortune thing that uh, Linux Mint does came up. And here you see a list of files and the date command that I ran. So how can we get it so that it goes into a file, but we also see it on the screen? And we're going to use a tool that I've gone over in the past called T. Now T, I don't believe, is installed by default on every system, but most systems, I think, believe it is. And what it allows you to do is view the output of a file of a command while also saving it to a file. So we'll run bash again, but we're going to pipe it into T, and then the name of the file we'll want, and we'll just call this rec2.txt for record2. Now we get that output on the screen. I can say list. I can say... Uh, uh, date, uh, whatever commands can I run. I can even man out a file like for eater cap or something. And it catted out the whole file. Now, if I open up a new terminal screen here, make that bigger, and I'll cat out my record file. Now, the stuff in this terminal is not being recorded because it's a new session. But we'll cat that out, and you can see that it recorded all that output. There's the eater cap man file. A little too much for me to scroll back on. I can vim into the file if we wanted to see everything. So there we go. You can see the commands I ran, the list command, the date command, and then the manual command. Um, so that's that. Um, one thing I haven't tried yet but I think could cause a problem is if I try to cut out the file I'm recording to, I don't think it will record it, create an endless loop, but obviously it will double everything in that file every time you do it. Let's find out. Cat record rec2. Okay, so we did that. I'll open up another terminal screen again. And I will vim into rec2. Now you can see we have all the information in here. And I'm betting at some point, once we get put through this long man file, there we go, everything's in here twice. So that's something to be conscious of. Every time you try to cat out the file you're recording to, in the session that you're recording uh, from, uh, it will double the size of the file. But it doesn't cause an endless loop, so that's okay. Uh, now at this point, I can type out exit, and you can see we exit out of that, and that should end the recording because we exit out of uh, the bash uh, session that was being recorded. So I can now list out stuff and type date and uh, the stuff comes out on the screen and now if I cat out that rec2 file that stuff won't be at the end or shouldn't be at the end of this file which it's not. So once again 
to start recording bash pipe t and the name of file this time i'll go rec 3.txt in this case or whatever you want to call it and we can start running stuff and then to stop the recording we'll just type exit and everything that was outputted in that session is now saved to that file so i hope that helps that viewer out a little bit uh, I don't know if that's exactly what he was looking for, but it's something I had never thought of before, and actually I, uh, I think this might come in handy. Uh, I'm sure you can put this into a startup script that every time Bash uh, is started up, maybe you can start recording stuff. So if you have users and you want to monitor what they're doing, uh, this could be a way uh, to do that, or at least it could lead to the ability to do that. So I thank you for watching, and I hope you visit the links in the description. And visit filmsbychris.com. It's Chris with a K. And I hope that you have a great day.